Once I used a 10 millimeter socket and ratchet with extension to remove all the nuts and bolts holding the oil pan to the motor, I was able to use a hammer to hammer the gasket separator let's see if we can take a look at this into the corner of the oil pan and while the gasket separator is a, just a thin blade doesn't really have enough power to pull the oil pan off of the motor that's where the brake spoon comes into play this uh, guy is like a little pry bar you can actually work this corner into the gap that you made with the gasket separator and then pry the pan down and away from the motor. And this is the corner you want to start on, the corner right above the drain plug, because the motor has a tab that's cast into the, the block right there just for this purpose, to pry the oil pan away from the motor. So you can see most of the FIPG forming gasket came off with the pan, left very little on the motor, but that was easily cleaned up with a razor blade. Look at Well, that wasn't nearly as painful as people have made it out to be. Here's the tab I'm talking about right here. This is the passenger rear corner of the motor. And you can tell it looks pretty clean. It required very, very little cleanup. The OE oil pan is being replaced by the Moroso oil pan. And the difference is, you can see, the OE oil pan has no baffles. Nothing to prevent oil from sloshing around. Just a couple of uh, ridges in there to slow it down a bit, maybe. Whereas the Moroso pan's got a baffle plate, and it's got a box around the oil pickup with the trap doors. And what this does is keeps oil close to the oil pickup, so that in high G corners, the oil pickup won't suck in air, which causes the oil pump gears to explode. It's one of the theories. Um, you can see the welds on this pan are great on the outside, completely around all the seams. The inside looks like it was just tack welded maybe to uh, hold things in place so they can get to the outside. <clears throat> there are two plugs that you can use for uh, sensors and returns, full returns. Uh, these plugs are loosely installed but what you're going to have to do if you're not going to use them and put the plugs back in place is use some Permatex thread sealant. Teflon tape will probably do the job as well and reinstall those. You can see this new pan has the oil drain plug that has the recessed rubber o-ring. One thing I like about this oil pan is that it allows A-arm service. You can see here where you've got some clearancing to get the bolt off the A-arm to get it off the car without having to remove the oil pan. Uh, this pan adds I think about a quart to the overall oil capacity, not that that's a problem with our Lotus with the oil coolers and the oil lines that are, are going to hold some more oil than the standard Celica Matrix does for this application. You can also see that the Moroso pan has the deeper sump on that side where the factory pan really has uh, not really a lot at all. And I, I want to say the other Moroso pan is, is built the same way and I think that's to clear the Celica or Matrix cross member for that application. The other thing you can see that makes this kind of a Lotus specific, the angle of the baffle in the, in the pan. The, the 2ZZ motor in the Lotus sits slightly at more of an angle than the Matrix and Celica, so I think the early Moroso pans marketed by one of the third party vendors, the, you can see the angle of the baffle plate really wasn't going to work fantastic for the Lotus just because the angle was off. But anyway, we'll see. This should uh, should work better. I'm going to check the dipstick clearance today, see if I need to get out the grinder and do any work to the baffle plate. But I've already test fit the Moroso pan. Uh, no trimming to the windage trays required. Everything seems to clear fine, bolts right up. So I think this is going to be a worthwhile improvement.